Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. This was actually video number two today. This one, this one's a Patreon exclusive. Uh, you could probably see the title, so can probably the AI. So that's going to probably limit uh, this particular video uh, getting out there. But yeah, it does feel like we are heading into very interesting territory as so much is being revealed right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I think things are getting better on our end. Yeah, I think the awakening is, is really um, quickening. There's a quickening. And we're looking at the location of Beryl right now as it has made it through the Lesser Antilles. is basically south of uh, Dominican Republic uh, and Haiti and is heading, unfortunately, it looks like directly over Jamaica as it makes its way towards the Gulf of Mexico. If you haven't heard, this is a Category 5 storm. It's broken all records. It's the quickest storm to hit Cat 5 ever. Um, so, you know, different times. And yet this happens the year that we saw so many anomalies from uh, Into Thin Air. It was showing one anomaly after another. Others caught up with it. But let's also take a look at the heat wave that's building in California Sacramento should be hitting uh, five consecutive days above 109 degrees. Previous record was three. San Jose forecast to see five straight days above 100. That would tie the all-time record. And Death Valley 127, it's just another day in Death Valley. Oh, it's still miserable. You know, it's really scary out there because people, people like to go um, or they come from all over the world to go to Death Valley. And they don't realize that the weather, if you get stuck and your car breaks down, whether it be rental or new or whatever, uh, a friend's car, and you try to get out and walk, unfortunately, so many people have died. So if you're ever traveling through that area, never underestimate the heat, even if it's not Death Valley, even just the hotter areas between uh, Vegas and Death Valley and the little towns, Tonopah, um, it's brutal. It's really brutal. So you always want to travel with water. You want to travel, make sure you have good communication wherever you're at. Um, it's just a really dangerous place to be that I think people underestimate. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've ran into that firsthand with people out there broken down and in trouble. Um, yeah, absolutely, as we had spent some time there, and Cindy lived there for many years. And so here we have it hitting, uh, let's see. I hate it when the, uh, <laughs> the noise always comes up. Here we have it in St. Vincent. I'll give you guys... <laughs> As you can see, it's not a pretty picture. Um, our prayers and best intentions go out to everybody that has already been impacted by this storm and all those that still may be impacted. Let us use our intention to steer it away from populated areas. Uh, Hurricane Barrel, by the way, it's a Cat 5 with winds over 165. That is enormous. This really is unprecedented. Yet at the same time, what else is unprecedented? Well, it's our understanding uh, that there's multiple harp locations around the globe, that there's tens of thousands of satellites up in position over us, and we don't really know what they're doing. Uh, of course, you know, the public is never on a need to know basis. We've seen unprecedented natural disasters. There's a agenda underway that we understand totally well in which the, the Weefers have straight out said, you know, public doesn't seem to get this climate change. Maybe it's too complicated for them. Maybe they're not as dumb as you think they are is basically really what we, we have to get across. This is over in Venezuela. So this is just way off on the periphery of this storm. And look at the intense flooding that's underway. Intense flooding. And somebody had um, made a comment. I think it was one of our regulars who's been with us for a very long time, um, but does view things from a little more of a flat earth, maybe even biblical perspective, um, saying, you know, this, this could be leftover Atlantean technology that we're witnessing. And sure, absolutely, it could be. Uh, I remember, I think it was 20... 
18, 20, 19 a conversation with Dave Devine, Adapt 2030, where we were talking about just that. You know, people that know what's coming. And, and really, when you look again to the Sumerian tales, what do they say? They say that the mighty ones, you know, those that judge and rule the earth, when they knew the Younger Dry- Dryas event was coming, they all left. <laughs> they went up into the sky or they went down into the earth where they were safe. They all left. They watched it happen. And then they came back after that. And then at some point, Plato, Plato even speaks about when the gods left. Uh, and again, these are not gods. These are just simply beings with a lot more technology than humans are led on to. This is showing some of the damage in uh, Curaçao, Cur- Curaçao, and you can see it is extensive. What we have happening around the globe has been nonstop, really, uh, since 2017. It feels like 2017 was the kickoff for all the craziness going to a completely uh, new, intense level. You know, and I'm watching after this last or most recent eclipse that we had, things seem to be kicking up even um, another notch. I I have not uh, forgotten that information where these are timelines. These are when things change. These are when things can get ugly. And um, gosh, you know, all I can do is look at this devastation and send my heart and prayers out to all these families this is a really big deal and you know in any really horrid horrid event there is a silver lining and and you know the silver lining you really have to keep focused on that so what we're looking at here is it is going to bring people together it is going to make heroes it is going to make miracles it, it is going to bring another level of consciousness to humanity and bring us up up and up even though we see the devastation, it's, it's it's heartbreaking. Yes, it is. And again, this is the island of Grenada. And, you know, it's interesting to note there was a military inter- intervention by the U.S. in Grenada at one point in time. This is um, a poor area. It, it's, it's not a rich island at all. I was actually there about 10 years ago and was hit by the poverty, you know, I'm, I don't know how much has changed in that time. But again, so many people that live in what we might think is a paradise in, in the Caribbean, uh, at the same time, they're living in abject poverty. And uh, that's really, really a, a sad situation. And now, you know, homes wrecked. And this is just the beginning of the of the season. So the Good news, if there is, uh, is that right now they're showing the storm weakening as it heads towards the Yucatan and then just being tropical storm level or perhaps minimal hurricane level when it comes out on the other side in the Gulf of Mexico. At the same time, it is our (laughs) mindset that this is technologically driven, so that could change at any time. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't look at any of this as natural in any way. You know, a lot of people are out there saying, well, it's, you know, it's it's this weather, it's that weather, it's it's the earth, you know, and, and no, 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 the earth is not doing this. This is technology, technology we cannot see, technology they will not allow us to see. Uh, the best we can do is understand that, you know, would, would, would the controllers ever lie? You know, would they lie to cover up their agenda? Is, is that kind of part of their um, <laughs> part of their game is would would they lie I think you, if you ask yourself that question and you answer it truthfully would the controllers lie that you have your answer right there well let's ask you do you feel that you've ever been lied to by any politician do you feel that you've ever been lied to by anybody that's in the medical system do you feel like you've been lied to with the uh, insurance companies you know, it goes on and on and on. How about the major news media? Absolutely. I think a lot of people would answer in the affirmative. So when it comes out on the other side, and I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up veering and, you know, threading the needle through uh, the Yucatan and Cuba, 
this is what they're showing. So one shows a Louisiana impact and the rest are showing Texas with a couple showing that it will impact Mexico or perhaps even Belize um, before Mexico. So this is showing the strength, just a very, very well-defined eye, very, very intense and strong. Again, this is record setting over two weeks earlier than any, any storm even close to this forming um, to this level. Into thin air is catching more anomalies and what looks to be signals uh, inside the storm. He's done a great job in, in watching this nonstop. I was very surprised to see another channel that I go to regularly on Twitter for information uh, having an argument with him, you know, and it was very surprising. But, you know, again, there's a lot of a lot of different things going on that are stressing out people to a, a very, very high degree in, in these times. As he was pointing out here, Texas, Oklahoma tornado outbreak had the same sort of imprints and patterns. And in fact, if you look at this, you'll see these same labyrinth looking patterns uh, jotted down in so many different ways um, out there in ruins and petroglyphs it, it, it's it's all over the place in artwork so a lot of times we look at things and we think wow what's the deep dark mystical significance maybe they were trying to tell us that hey you know that that big plague back in well, whatever year it was 1100 well that wasn't really uh, an act of the creator and et cetera, et cetera. Maybe technology was used for that plague. Maybe technology was used for the earthquake. Maybe technology is used to control the weather. Again, Operation Popeye, it's declassified. Back in the 60s and 70s, they were controlling the weather and flooding out villages in Vietnam. It's, it, it's known. It's declassified. Weather control documents go back to 1890s. 1890s when we look at the bible we should take a look at things in a new light and again don't look to one of the translations that has uh obfuscated and and covered up the real uh story here because when you look to you know king james king james was the head of all the masonic churches in scotland and england do you trust prince charles then why would you trust king james why would you trust Constantine, the Roman emperor, who again killed his, his wife and firstborn child because he was afraid they were going to usurp his power? That's not turning the other cheek. You know, oh, son, you, you want to lead the nation? You, know, you want to head the empire? Well, I'm proud of you. Okay. No, instead he killed him. And this is who brought about the construction of the Bible in the first place as it was not brought into existence until the beginning of the Nicene Council and the subsequent councils after that, over 300 years after Yeshua was here, if that timeline is even relatively close. Uh, and again, those things attributed to Yeshua, uh, they're attributed to many other beings too in many different ways. There's other beings that have uh, raised people from the dead, controlled the weather, uh, you just have to look outside of one book and look to other mythologies and look to other legends and open up the mind a little. So when we look at this, it's Yahweh who is one of the powerful ones throwing hailstones down on them. And again, who is the Lord of hosts? It's, it's the God of war is really what it translates to the God of war. That's Aries. That's Mars. Mars. Well, that's a clue because according to the Sumerian uh, stories, the Akkadian stories, Babylonian stories, the uh, EGG, those that rebelled against the Anunnaki, literally came here from Mars. They came from Mars to here. Yeah, you know, kid you not, God of, of war, Mars and warfare. You ever wonder why that's there? Because this is it. And, you know, again, who, who are the chosen people of, of who exactly? It's, it's not, not the creator of this universe, the, the manufacturer of this natural matrix. No, it's one of the Elohim, which, again, just literally 
mighty ones, powerful ones that judge humanity. And so when you look to actual translations, it, it's Yahweh. It's Yahweh. Now, Yahweh is patient, has great strength, and he's, we're also told that he's jealous and vindictive. Uh, yeah, and angry and vengeful. And uses raging winds and storms, clouds and dust. Oh, yeah. Storms, storms, storms are attributed to these beings, as well as plagues. What happened in 2020? Yes, what happened with, with AIDS? What happened with uh, everything that's been eradicated and then brought back? You know, the system is parasitic. In our opinion, again, ticks, they're not natural. They're, they're not natural and native. They're, they're manufactured and brought into this uh, existence for, with the express purpose of, of basically being vectors for pestilence and plagues. It's all right here. And then, you know, you're told, watch out for the occult. Oh, watch out for the occult. And you have Yahweh telling Moses to raise his staff and strike the river and the staff turns into a serpent. Isn't that kind of black magic? Turning everything into blood? Get your head out of your butt, people. It's time to wake up. Ouch. But, you know, there's really no difference between what we're looking at here and what's going on now and just not enough people are asking that question and it, it makes for a very 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 difficult awakening when people won't look at the literature and look at the comparisons um you know really all we can do is be patient i mean for me i want people to wake up quicker because i know this world is a safer place for everyone if everyone is awake and on to um the tricks of the trade that the controllers use you know they put this bible out and they they make it like it's all so holy and everybody bowed to it you know and it's all just a control mechanism that's it it's really nothing more than that it's something to keep your belief system in check it's to keep you in check it's to keep your family in check and make sure people walk a certain line so that they can remain in control it is nothing about love absolutely nothing about love it, it is nothing holy it it is ab all about control and until we recognize that on a much larger scale um you know i i don't ever want to be negative but it would sure be better if people could break the god spell because it really is a spell i mean if you look at the book and look at it logically how can you think that is holy you know how i I can no longer at one point I was stuck but while I was stuck I had this feeling deep inside of my soul that this is not right so even I knew it was not right and um, hopefully as the sun does what the sun does more and more people will wake up and what we do is we be supportive and we meet people where they're at and at some point we're going to have to work together when it comes to this system so I think it's better that you find like-minded people now do the best you can in setting up a structure so that you don't rely on the system because, you know, if you want to know what's going to happen, you just look to the Bible because they've written it out as far as what they are going to do to you, <laughs> what they're going to do to us. They're going to destroy everything so that you have a really hard time surviving or they're going to, you know, cast down hailstones and ruin your house or they're going to release some plague and make you very, very sick. So it's all right there in writing. We just have to rise up and above it and understand that the true source of this world is about love. It is about understanding. It is about opening your heart to the next person and the next and the next and not not denying that there is a force on this planet that really wants to do some dark black magic yeah absolutely and you know again to clarify there are those people that see the new testament and and the old testament as having nothing to do with each other in some ways and they feel they could feel the darkness of the old testament gods because it is in the plural as yahweh is speaking of himself as one of the powerful ones and it's so clearly stated in in the uh, hebrew in the original hebrew uh the problem is people don't take the time to to look into these things and then look at other sources and you'll also notice too that some of the writings uh, some of the sayings that are attributed to yeshua 
um, <clears throat> don't blend at all. And, and yet there's been whole different dissertations and master's, uh, master's theses uh, given on trying to make it homogenous, which it really isn't. But this is, again, where they've taken the original messenger's message, which is one of human potential. Again, greater things you will do. Yeah, greater things you will do. And talking about human potential, and the control systems grabbed it, and again used their narcissistic abuse, their gaslighting <clears throat> to make, again, humans think that because you're born, uh, you're worthless. And, you know, you, there's there's no worth in your existence. It, it, this whole matrix is created for you. This is created for you, and this is what... The real Yeshua was was trying to teach that we can control things. When he controls the weather, he's overruling the uh, the control system and saying, "If you guys just realize the power that's within you, we can overrule this control system." And the control system cannot have that, and they fear that more than anything. They fear you and understand how much they fear you because they've given away their ability to be like us. They have, and that's where the jealousy comes in, is they understand that our potential is is far greater. We have not, um, we have not given away our potential. We have not traded it in. We have not sold it. Our potential lies in our heart chakra. Our potential lies in our ability to love and our ability to co-create with nature, which is the most powerful, powerful, powerful. Um, sources in in the world in the worlds in the universe yes and i know that none of our regulars have their heads up their butt they're uh, just like us preaching on your soapboxes pointing out the fact that unfortunately uh, half or better of the world is still following demons and they think they're following uh, the real creator of this universe makes it tough It does. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.